all right everyone so it's always it's already been like two year to this particular video where i made a google sheet as a database for godot since then there has been a lot of changes and i'm here to update those right uh, we were making a stupid code right like i'm using request parameters to send the data that is a bad idea uh, also i'm sending like ah why did i do that i have no idea but this is really stupid code so let's just get up to update it to latest code version as well right so whoever has watched this video your code is in v1 and latest is going to be in the main branch all right yeah so in this video i have pretty much explained how everything works what is the behind reasoning how to test the api how to create the api and everything i have explained uh, so in this video i am not planning to explain that in the current video so i yeah i am sorry i get it like i also hate when i have to watch previous video in order to understand this video so let's say if that don't happen uh, i will explain uh, basics right okay let's start a new one so what we have is that we have our google sheet all right this one in our case where we store our data okay now in order for us to access this data we need to convert this to as a web app or the api right the rest apis i mean that's a common concept so what we have is an app script provided by google what it does is that it allows us to convert this google sheet into its web app or api or a static website however you want to do that but we are going with the approach of web app so now it is a web app we can effectively make http request from any client right it may be in our case it is Karot, it may be python it may be your javascript website or any platform it may be your node mcu anywhere where you are allowed to make http requests you can use google sheet as a database one thing to keep in mind is that this is not a secure approach if you are planning to return this to end user right then this is not a way you should use google sheet or you should use uh, sensitive data into the google sheet because anything you are sending to the end user they can easily decom uh, decompile your good binary they can have the url of your the script or the api and they can make an api request they can change the data they can update the data yes you can make a like access token system so they can only update and delete their data but if you are making as a plan for the game then there is possibility that they will just update their records right if you are storing hp or the weapons or something like that they will just update it and they will abuse that so in that case uh, you should not use it but if you are using for like personal notes application which i am doing budget application or maybe you are sh sharing it to the user and using users google sheet as a service like for example you are make you created some sort of application i use Godot for application mainly not for the game development but even whatever the case is you want to user to see their own data then of course you can opt with this approach all right and if you are sure that no one is going to decompile your Godot binary then you can use this on the critical situation as well so regardless of that i think i explained this how pretty much everything works right so what you need to do is that if you are if you don't want to watch a video and you can understand the code just go to the main branch copy the app script code and this is basic understanding how you can make a request from the Godot, right so before we do let me show you the demo so this is what we are going to make all right i have made everything separate so it is easy for us easy for me to show how everything works for example if i click here create new node i will get the data of that let me send it to this uh -huh. okay so we can look side by side here i have this is the content right here i have new note well this is going to be the content right i can update it for example i drop it and i say update it should update here as well right you can see that so and i want to delete this 
let's say delete and it should delete from here itself all right so that's how basically it is going to work okay now let's get into the setup so what you want you want to have one private google sheet right this is the private sheet you can see only i can access and in that you can have your data or however amount of sheets you want to have in my case i have id title and text because i have made a note application the reason why i have kept id here is so i can update this items later words right we need you need to have unique identifier maybe you can use user username or anything like that which is you are sure that is unique so when you want to update this field you will need id in order to update that right we have title and text so pretty basic information then what you need to do you need to go to extension and click on app script so i have already opened that here uh, let me explain uh, pretty much that these two functions right do post and do get these are the main functions which converts your script into the api or requestable web app you can understand that way so most of the thing are already set up what you will need to do is that you will just need to change this functionality right this is what i these are the actions okay the action we have a lot of actions such as fat note notes list uh, fetch particular note content create new note save existing note delete note right update note kind of like that we have a lot of different different functions so i'm just going to, i'm just explaining you that you can do this way also so update these two functions and you are pretty much good to go you will need to create appropriate functions regarding what you want to do regarding whatever your use case is and this is like a javascript uh, app script is similar to javascript it's just that you need you will need to learn spreadsheet app api like how you are going to control the google sheet using the app script it is also very easy it's not that hard you can get the documentation and the, it is very simple or any ai can do that i hope so what i'm doing here let's go one by one all right uh, create new node okay what we are doing is the get active sheet means this one you can also get the sheet by a name that also you can do and if you have multiple sheets you are managing multiple data set you can of course do that as well right get active sheet then what i'm doing is that i'm just converting them into the proper uh this is the data which we got basically from our godot application right from here uh, that this is going to be the title and this is going to be the text right from this field so that is the data i'm converting into the proper json so i can take it i'm creating the new id which is just a my helper function to create new id it is nothing other than just a auto incrementing integer right one two three four i have made a pretty simple use case there right then pretty simple extracting the data right and sheet dot append row id title text what does append row mean is that it will just add a new row here okay so if you use uh, that kind of request create new note action then it will just add a new row keep that in mind in your case if you want to update then you will use this function right because you will need to find that particular id there so what we are doing here when we want to find a particular id again we got the sheet we got the data and we got the id we just basically converted that to the integer right uh, data right basic checks we have all data or not because we don't want to fill up the empty data there and then this is pretty important what i'm doing is i'm getting the range right range dot get range sheet dot get range this is the row number from where to start and this is the column okay basically because i have this as a uh, headers if you understand what i mean so what i am saying there is that get me all the rows of the a to gem a right that is what we are doing there and we are getting it all right and we got the values and basically nothing but other than i'm just matching the ids this is a not a good way to do it you know you can use a filter function as well that will be much easier compared to what i am doing here 
I'm just using what was the fastest way to implement it okay so that's there I'm just getting the values and then I'm just updating those fields all right fetch note list this is on the get what we are doing here is that we are just returning the IDs and the titles okay we are not returning the text so you may want to do this when you have large amount of data you don't want to get all the data at once what you may want to do is that you may want to add pagination or you may want to get only IDs and title and request the only data you need that way you uh, that way you can show the good speed to the user and also it will be easy to handle right the modular code it will be easy to handle data right so fetch note list again the same thing I'm doing this I'm just converting that to the JSON this is important you will need to convert that into the JSON type uh, in order to return it back to the group right in the content it's the same thing what I'm trying to get do they provide definitions ah. okay no worries delete note same thing we are just deleting the row sheet dot delete row right I think you pretty much got the idea how these APIs work make sure you just have these two functions that will convert it to you know web app. now how you will basically this is the code how you will deploy it so you go here new deployment right uh, you will create a from here you will select the web app you can also use API but web app works best in our scenario web app whatever name you want to give make sure you give access to anyone because if you use anyone with Google account or only myself then you will need to set up authentication in the good uh, also anyone with the Google account I would suggest just keep anyone and implement the authentication system by yourself here somewhere like use a JWT token or device ID you are on Godot and it runs on platform so you can easily get the unique device ID itself you can use that right rather than using the like that just deploy and it will be deployed alright you will get this deployment ID if you want the deployment ID it's basically the same and you will get this URL so what I have done is that I have just put it here right script entire URL is there uh, in your case this is the important part which you need to hide right if I, I'm not sure in the good I haven't used it since like since that video you can understand that uh, or maybe last year I have used for just making a simple application so I am pretty much I forgot how Godot works if current version of Godot has ENV loader kind of thing or something like you are sure that this is going to be an environment variable and it is not it is hardly going to be exposed to the script kiddies then it's fine also you can never make this secure from the prof professionals so keep that in mind right now we are at the Godot code what we need to do so this is a simple UI nothing much extra nothing right let's just get on with it I have created the helper function like I got the habit of Python that's why I now make these kind of function right so we have make get request and post request endpoint is our action which we want to do for example I want to do uh, where it is delete node that is going to be the endpoint and the action right uh, this one okay again the same this one and we will be checking this whatever that particular action is we will activate that particular function and that particular function we will give that particular function data if you understand uh, then everything is pretty simple and straightforward yeah uh, this is same thing we are requesting the endpoint I am connecting into the request completed that's it on the post request you will need to make sure you convert that to the JSON whatever your data dictionary is uh, in my case let's see we have title tax right and ID in some case such as delete and update we have that so in that case make sure you convert that data into the JSON where it is yeah JSON and then just create a new request same thing connect send URL header 
request a method to get or post and your JSON data, right? And that will just make a request to that particular URL, which is going to be this app URL, all right? Now, on request complete, what you want to do is basically you want to, if in the case you have made a post request, you will get the data. And if you have made a get request, you will get the updates. Uh, uh, yeah, you will get the data in both case. In case of post, you will get like, yeah, data is updated, new ID is created or kind of like that, right? Or ID not found or warning. So this code is going to remain same, right? What you will do, you will convert to the string from UTF-8, then you will do JSON parsing, right? JSON dot parse string. Okay, and you will have your JSON. You can use it however you want to use it. I am using it like this. Uh, this is the wrong approach. Don't do what I have done here. Is that basically I am checking if it is a list, then I am asking for a note list, and if it is not a list, then I am asking for a text. That's that is never going to happen, right? In your case, so create a separate function in order to identify or may may create a separate on request completed for each every you know, each and every particular type of API endpoint. In that case, you will have full control, but also a lot of redundancy. So based on your use case, you will need to modify your code, right? I am getting my data, okay? It's a pretty simple data.txt because this time we are sending a proper JSON data. So these three functions, if you understand, then everything else is just a good old part, which you can easily do, right? It is a save note, what I'm doing, nothing. Created the data dictionary, right? Made a post request. Method was whatever. Okay, so reason why I have method here and ID here is that I'm using save note to create a new note and update a note, right? So when we are creating, we don't need ID. ID will be created on the Google Sheet site. And when we want to update, we will send the ID to update that particular thing. So method is going to be this, uh, delete one, fetch, or maybe create new node, right? Save existing node. I should have named it action, so you guys wouldn't have been confused, right? Yeah, action would be much better word. Yeah, so that is basically action which you are sending, right? Delete, same thing, I'm just saying delete node, and I'm sending the node data. Delete API requires the ID, so I am sh I'm sharing the ID, right? In your case, you may want to get, you know, headers with authentication or maybe some sort of identification information that yes, you don't end up updating other user data in the case you are using in that kind of scenario, right? Other than that, I think it's pretty simple, straightforward. Yeah, these are the good function, simple helper function, right? Uh, as you can see, I'm not good at it because I realized that on the item list, I cannot assign the ID to particular field similar to uh, unlike the menu button or menu. I think yeah, there is something like menu or some menu, right? menu bar or something menu button or pop-up menu. Somewhere we can have a list with the ID. So I ended up doing this, right? Uh, this is not a case, what? Ah, okay, yeah. All right. So this is what we have. Pretty simple, no need to explain there, right? And the button press, update button, delete, get note, all same thing, sending the action and whatever data we need to send on the post request, right? I hope you understood and you like it. Well, anyway, uh, I think we are done here. Right, again, main branch. Here you have the latest code. And yeah, also, if you have better solution, then create a PR. I would be happy to merge. 